All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Side Talk. Tonight, I have Michelle Flood. She is a transformational leader, and she's a former rock singer. She is a rock singer in Australia. And after a life-changing moment, um, she started to do something a little different, which we're going to talk about tonight. So welcome to the podcast, Michelle. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Keisha. Thank you very much. <laughs> So tell, tell us a little bit about how your career as a singer came about. Um, I started singing, my mother said, by the age of two. I could hear any song on the radio. And by the age of five, I was on a TV show singing in Australia. And so I was singing my entire life, basically. <laughs> and um, I went on to have great success with Time Warner and a great band. I was the singer, songwriter, manager of the band. We, at one stage in Australia, we toured for seven years non-stop. Usually our audiences were between four and 6,000 people. And, um, you know, we did videos and great recordings. And we toured with In Excess, The Pretenders, you name it, when they came to Australia. And we were just about to get um, a record contract in Europe, which is what we'd always wanted, because otherwise you're still broke in Australia. There's not enough people to buy your records, <laughs> your CDs. So um, just before that happened, I was in a near fatal car accident and that particular thing changed my life. You would think it would be the worst thing that could ever happen to a singer to have broken bones and told she may never walk again when you're crazy antics on stage, cartwheels, jumping on top of speakers, you know, <laughs> entertaining people as a rock singer. Um, but it ended up being my true purpose. It, it took me to my true purpose in life and it got me working in countries all over the world. My largest audience, 50,000 people, hit records all over the world as well, and doing something that actually helps heal and change lives. So that's it in a nutshell. We, we'll, we'll go deeper though, huh? <laughs> I'd like to. <laughs> so let's take it back a little bit. What did okay. you enjoy about being a rock singer? Well, the only thing I really enjoyed was actually singing and entertaining. It was what I was born to do. The rest of it is just really tough. You have to love what you do to be able to be in a rock band, particularly in Australia, because you've got to travel 12 hours in between gigs. You know, it's just such a huge country, but hardly many people, so not many cities. And so I, I loved songwriting. I love the creative. I love working with musicians because musicians are so open-minded because we've all been told by our parents don't do it <laughs> so we're very free spirit so i love anytime i've met any musicians anywhere in the world any country we all immediately bond because we understand how tough it is to you know do what you do and to get where you are if you are if, if you're actually making a living doing it that's miraculous so it, it's a tough life but um being on the road all the time and never having a home to go back to because you're on the road, you don't need a home. You know, as I said, one stage, it was seven years nonstop. So uh, yeah, just the creative thing. It's just, it made, it makes my heart sing to sing. <laughs> and I mean, I'm still doing it. I just created a new album last year. And so I'm still doing it. That's beautiful. I always say if there was one um, talent that I could have, it would be to sing. Like, I think it's so amazing when you have that special gift of, you know, being able to sing really, really well. Because I mean, we can all sing, but I don't think anybody wants to hear me sing. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I know. Well, it's not just the singing. I think it's the way you love the audience and you love what you do the, the charisma comes out that way because i know that there's tons of singers that are better than me i mean i had uh, i'll give you an example there were these two ladies in australia that did backing vocals nearly all the time for bands and um they had the most incredible voices and you know i heard one of them say how come she's a rock star and we're still doing backing vocals because it's attitude it's all about your state of mind and what you're willing to put into it to become who you want to be. I think anyone can do anything that they want to do if they love what they're doing so much that nothing and no one can stop them. You know, if anyone tried to stop them, they'd 
cut them down. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, because think about even like Madonna, like Madonna is not like the strongest singer, but she just had that whole package and the way that she you know, would come out and the songs that she would sing, it was just like, so alluring. Like, I don't know, you, you're right. And she had that attitude that I'm going to make it to the top and look at her, you know? Yeah. But her voice, her voice, um, it was not very good when she first started. It's true, but, but they did pretty good in the studio with her, but it was, um, after she, when she did Evita, she started taking full-on proper singing lessons and she ended up getting a really good voice she's got a good voice now really good yeah I, I mean I don't think it's a bad voice but just like you said like there are people who their voices are so powerful like yeah you know and they don't need voice lessons like it's, <laughs> you know what I mean but I've never had a I've never had a voice lesson right and they don't <laughs> have the whole but they don't have that thing that thing that you need so you're definitely right so tell us a little bit about how your accident occurred. And I, I specifically want to know where were you in your life the day before your accident? Where, where were you mentally and physically? How are you feeling? And what was going on right before you had that accident? I was asleep. <laughs> I was in the truck. We just drove, we just driven from Brisbane and we always had one of us in the truck because we used to hire a truck driver and his truck. Mm -hmm. So we'd, I always wanted to make sure one of us was with the truck driver so we didn't skedaddle with our, all our equipment. <laughs> you never know when you don't know people. We yeah. didn't have the internet back then so you couldn't do background checks or anything. Anyway, so this was my turn to go with the truck driver. It was about a 12 and a half hour drive. And um, when we got to Sydney, he had fallen asleep at the wheel and he went into a telephone pole. So all I remember is I did my gig in Brisbane. We packed everything up, got in the truck. And after a few hours, because I'd been singing for six hours that night, I just fell asleep. So I, I woke up to the car accident. So I wasn't thinking anything. When you're in, sh you're just in shock. You don't know what's happened, you know? <laughs> so there wasn't yeah. really anything going through my head <laughs> at I all. I didn't mean specifically right at the accident. I meant like your state of mind before the accident, like maybe a, a month before, a week before, like how were you feeling about your career? Was there anything going on that made you kind of wonder if you, you were on the right path? Like uh, I'm trying to- Everything, everything was wonderful. Everything was wonderful. We just finished doing a great uh, video for uh, one of our songs and the band were getting along so well and we started making more money and um then we heard about this record label interested in europe so no everything was great wow I okay mean, it couldn't have been better <laughs> all right good i i just wanted to get that information it's important right. to me <laughs> well, that's a, that's pretty cool though uh keisha because no one has ever asked me that question and i've been interviewed since then about three thousand times yeah and no one has no one has ever asked me that question <laughs> i'm just curious that's no, good so you had this accident and um when you woke up and you got to the hospital after the accident what was your prognosis well i didn't pass out i was awake the whole time you know in the, in the ambulance when they were i had these beautiful long puss in boots <laughs> And they had to cut them off. And I'm like, why do you have to do that? And they said, well, you, you're really not in good shape right now. The prognosis was my hip was completely um, severed. My, my pelvis was completely smashed. All the bone went into the bladder and other organs. Um, I had a fractured back and um, all in, internal bleeding, like to the max. So it wasn't a good pro prognosis. They didn't think I would live for the first week. And after the first operation of 17 and a half hours, then I had to be in traction for about two weeks, which was the most horrifically painful thing you can imagine. It's just unbelievable. And so, uh, but what happened? I'll tell you what happened. Let me just tell you what happened. It was just amazing. Um, being, when you're in physical, people say when you're depressed, that's just as bad as physical pain. No, it ain't. No, sir. <laughs> physical pain that is that bad 
you can't even think straight, let alone feel depressed because you're in, you're in that moment again and again of this horrific pain and no amount of pethidine or whatever they were giving me could stop it completely. It was just unbelievable. Sometimes I would just pass out, pass out because I just couldn't handle the pain. And um, people kept putting on things I'd never heard about before, affirmations, audio books about positivity, because I'd never needed anything like that, Keisha, because I was on purpose. I loved my life. I got together a great band. We all really got along well. We'd finally found an, an amazing row crew as well. And, and so I, I'd never needed, I had so much willpower and I was always such a happy, positive person. I never for a moment needed anyone to motivate me. I was the one who motivated everybody else to make sure they show up on time and everything. But I, I, when I heard about these affirmations, something within me clicked. It, it was like, your state of mind, what you think about, everything that I'd ever wanted to create, all I had to do was think about it and put my willpower and take action. And I always, it always happened, no matter what it is that I wanted, it always came to pass, treating everyone nicely at the same time, not being like a Madonna was. <laughs> being really, because I know that sweet words are more uh, motivational for people than, you know, putting fear into people. So, I thought I'll do an affirmation because people have been healed. I was listening to all these audio programs and people with their state of mind. And so I did, I am healed. I know I am. I love myself. I am my friend because none of that was true. So you've got to say an affirmation has to be stated in the now and it has to be emotionalized and you have to believe it. And then the mind, which neuroscientists have found out now, the studies are incredible. Well, then go to work to heal whatever needs to be healed, whether it's emotional, physical, whatever it is, whether it's to attract money into your life, whatever it is, affirmations are great if you believe them. If you don't believe them and your doubting mind will spit it out. And that's what happened to me, Keisha. I didn't believe it because the doctors weren't saying I was ever be completely healed. Um, I didn't love myself at all. I just thought, oh my God, what am I going to do with my life? Am I going to have to commit suicide or something once I can move? I was just, you know, it was just ridiculous what was going through my mind as I was healing, but I was still in that state of, I actually moved from pain, physical pain into, you know, emotional pain as well. But then what happened was I had this epiphany, full on spiritual epiphany. You cannot get a song out of your head, even if you want this, particularly jingles. And that's why advertising agencies spend billions a year, not millions, on very famous songs or jingles, because then you can never, ever get the product out of your head. It's there forever. It's gone into the subconscious mind. And so with a song, you don't have to emotionalize the affirmation. You can't look the kids learn ABCs through singing their ABCs. So, pregnant pause. <laughs> I just set, I got a little cassette player. I always had a little cassette player because whenever I had a song, rock, song idea, I would sing it down because otherwise you can forget it. You get this great idea. You've got to always record it immediately once you've got the idea. So I just sang, I am healed, I know I am. I love myself, I am my friend. Over and over and over and over again filling up a 90 minute cassette. I played it over and over again. I went on to feel so bright within my mind. I didn't know what was happening, but that was the beginning of my affirmation music, which no one had ever done before. And my healing of my body, that was the, that was the first song. Now I've got over 400 affirmation songs. People have downloaded and listened to them multi-millions of times. I've worked with Deepak Chopra, Bob Proctor, Wayne Dyer, all of these people because everyone found out about this affirmation music and that's how my true purpose and career took off. So all the years that I've been an entertainer and I could handle any audience and um, do what I did, now I could do to people that wanted positive positivity. So I was hired to sing and perform and talk about affirmations all over the world with all these famous authors and that's how it began. <laughs> Wow, that's so amazing. 
It is. So I was going to ask um, why you think adding the music made a difference, but you explained that because it's like a jingle and people retain that. And that's the thing about that. So, okay. Yeah. Well, so the lyrics, the lyrics or the affirmations in my case go into the left hemisphere of the brain and the music and the melody goes into the right hemisphere of the brain and it goes into your subconscious mind 300 times faster than attempting just to say it or even write it down. And if you go to michellebloodcom you can see all the huge amount of studies from Berkeley to John Hopkins about um, positive music and what it can do to you. But when I first started, they didn't have any scientific proof of how it works, but now we do. So even if someone doesn't believe it, you've got to believe they're scientists at least, even if you don't believe the little blonde Aussie. <laughs> so as a transformational leader, what is your day-to-day -day like? Oh, goodness. Um, I've got um, students from all over the world, over 32 countries now. It was only 26 last year. Uh, and I do Zoom calls with them. And I, I've got, you know, we do huge events via Zoom since the lockdown. Before that, it was, um, we put on live events all over the country and different countries as well. And I also write books, I record songs. I do one-on-one ses -on -one sessions with my students from the mysticalexperience.com. These students, uh, I teach them meditation practice. I, I just nonstop, I'm totally into, and meditation meditation of course I meditate a lot because that's one of the main things that I teach now is meditation because that is what will bring anyone an awakening of happiness of success and you just relieve release all stress from your life when you meditate and you become healthier yeah I've been wanting to learn to meditate for many years now I do it a little but I still feel like I'm not getting it <laughs> well the way i teach it, it it it's i understand i had an enlightened teacher and i went off the grid for 12 years and just studied with her just that's all i did and i eventually became awakened as well but i've got something for your for your wonderful hell no hell yes <laughs> <laughs> michelle blood m-i-c-h-e-l-e b-l-o-o-d don't blame me it's my daddy's name michelleblood.com forward slash oh hell no and you're going to get some of my best selling products everything for free you, they're going to get which you'll get as well the video on the practice of meditation where i teach how to practice meditation from people that have never done it to people that have just gotten bored with it and they just want to find a new way of meditating and also um, some of my best selling songs some of them that i actually wrote with bob proctor the great and late bob proctor the Magic of Affirmation Power, my latest book, and um, Magnetic Creative Visualization, just goal setting. I mean, probably over $200 worth of products for free because I really want your listeners, your viewers to have an opportunity to think, oh, well, I'm not gonna do it. But if it's free, you can at least experiment with it and give yourself an opportunity to have these great products that really do work and just see how you feel after just listening to the songs. You do not have to sing along. That's the whole thing. It goes straight into your subconscious mind. So oh there you go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michelle. I really appreciate that. I will definitely be looking into that. And I hope that my listeners will too. Sometimes I have very lazy listeners, but hopefully they will, <laughs> they will listen and check it out because I've been sending them a, um, well, I have, I always have like this, um, what do you call it? Survey. Tell me what you want to hear. Well, you've got to give people incentive. So if you give them free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I'm I, bringing I think, them think... such great content, like people like you, you know, I'm like, come on. <laughs> no, when I first, when I first met you, I think, which, which was last December at the summit, uh, your, the energy that was coming off you was, and just the fact that you were cheeky enough to have a show called, you know, hell no. I, I was just, oh, I love this woman. And I said to you, you want me on your show. You're going to say hell yes to have me on your show. <laughs> Absolutely. I just, I, just I, I love, I love when people are irreverent 
because then I know that they're their own person and they're doing their own thing. And that's so important to happiness. So good yeah. for you, girl. Good Thank for you. you. I love that. So <laughs> you, you're bringing us into our segue of our oh hell yes moment. So on side talk, I switched it up and I asked my guests to share an oh hell yes moment. So an oh hell yes moment is a moment of clarity or success. So I want you to share a moment where you have felt successful or you felt like everything made sense in that moment for whatever you were doing and share that moment with us. Oh, there's so many. I know. I know. But I mean, of course, the, the main one is when I had my full Kundalini awakening, but I can't go into that right now because it wouldn't be appropriate. But um, you know what? It might have been when I first met Bob Proctor, we would do promoters had brought him to Australia to tour all over the country. And they had hired me to come and sing and speak about affirmations you know, in between, like do a little about four songs per night. And he didn't want a singer, but they said, look, we're paying her because she's really become popular doing this. And she's a popular singer here. And it brings in a different type of audience, a younger audience. And Bob said, I'm Bob Proctor. I don't need that. Anyway, what happened was he came backstage and he said, um, I didn't want a singer. I went, well, nice to meet you too, mate. <laughs> and he said, however, however, he said, I think this is the most extraordinary thing I've ever seen. The audience are up there all singing the affirmations because I had it up on a big screen, the lyrics, and had them all dancing and doing stuff. And he said, and that's what we teach. All of us teach this. Every transformational teacher teaches affirmations. But for them to go into the subconscious mind takes a lot of effort and you've got to emotionalize them. And people just don't, they give up too easily. And he said, I've never heard of this before, affirmations to rock music. He just said, um, I want to work with you all over the world. And he meant it. He, um, him and his wife flew me first class all over the world to work with them. He ended up writing music with me. And I knew when he said that, that this was going to be not just a little thing. This was going to be a big thing in the world for what I was about to do. And um, that would definitely be, oh, hell yes. And he said, would you like to? And I should have said, oh, hell yes. And I went, yeah. <laughs> Duh. Oh, my and, gosh. So yeah, so that, that was a good moment. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. What a way to, like, get that check in that, yeah, I'm totally on the right path. I'm doing the right thing, you know? Yeah, yeah that's great. I love it. Well, Michelle, it was amazing having you on. I love Thank what you're you. doing. Please. <laughs> Tell us again where we can get, where we can connect with you and where we can get all of the stuff that you are giving to our listeners. Michelle Blood, M-I-C-H-E-L-E-B-L-O-O-D.com forward slash. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Still love that. Yes. <laughs> Oh, hell no, guys. So Michelle is so kind. She's giving us this free stuff. So guys, please take advantage of it. Affirmations are the thing to do. I have these affirmations that come to my phone um, just to remind me in the middle of the day that I am smart. I am strong. I am powerful, <laughs> you know, and Keisha, I love it. <laughs> please, can I just add a little thing? Yes. Oh, I don't know why I wasn't mentioning this. We've spent a year and a half creating this amazing app, which just launched today. Oh, nice. Called magnet to money app.com only 99 cents. It's got over 63 affirmations with the music underneath it. It's got, it's the magnet to money song, which is the most famous song I've ever done. Um, Cause it just brings you, they're making it into a dance mix in the UK, this song. And it, it's so powerful to get you into prosperity consciousness. So if you just go to your, just for iPhones to start with, magnettomoneyapp.com to that website. I, I, I don't know why I wasn't even thinking of that. That's crazy. We've put so much effort into getting this app out there. But anyway. <laughs> you look at that. I just reminded you of your app without even knowing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, that was like a real moment. I had no idea about Michelle's app, but I just wanted to share that. 
So it's, it's, you know, it's God working his magic. So God I, bless you, Keisha. Thank you. Oh, hell yes. There's yes. another oh, hell yes moment. <laughs> right, guys, we want that magnet to money app. So we need to get that and dial in because that's definitely something we all want is prosperity in some shape, fashion, you know, way, whatever it, you know, it brings. So right. yeah, I'll definitely be downloading that today. Yeah, you'll you'll <laughs> love it. It's 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 really really cool. Absolutely. All right.